tra le terapie sperimentali che si stanno testando per le infiltrazioni intraarticolari vi è anche la tossina botulinica. Ne parliamo con la professoressa Andrea Boon della prestigiosa Mayo Clinic che ha presentato le sue ricerche al congresso ISIAT di Roma. Dottor Boon, qual è il rationale di usare la botulinica toxin come intraarticolare injection? Could you please describe it to us? Well, um, you know, botulinum toxin is well known for its effect on preventing the release of acetylcholine, which is what stops the muscle contracting. However, it also appears that it may prevent the release of other neurotransmitters that are involved in causing pain and inflammation. So that's really the rationale behind using it in this way. When you had the idea to use it as an as intraarticular injection? Well, based um, mostly on some animal studies um, <coughs> that have shown some effects on, on decreasing release of various neurotransmitters and decreasing pain, for example, in rats with formalin-induced um, pain. And then there have also been um, a number of case reports in humans that looked very promising, but of course, case reports you know, are not robust scientifically, and so I really wanted to see is this something that stands up to a scientific um, you know, scrutiny and works because it's not a cheap um, option but it would potentially be a great second line um, therapy after, if people fail cortisone which is currently you know, by far our most cost effective injection therapy but we're always looking for other options particularly for patients who can't have joint replacement surgery. You know, there's a number of joints that can't be replaced um, or there's patients who are too sick or too young or whatever reason are not candidates for joint replacement surgery. So in those patients, we're always looking for other options. Uh, you at the Mayo Clinic did a study. Uh, could you please describe it and tell us the results? Yeah, we took 60 patients um, with sort of mild to moderate knee osteoarthritis. We divided them into three groups, um, 20 patients per group. One group got cortisone and then the other two got botulinum toxin, Botox, either at a kind of a medium dose of 100 units or at a higher dose of 200 units. Um, so we injected that on day one and then we followed them up for six months. And we, our main outcome was at two months, uh, the effect on the pain, VAS, the pain scores. But then we also had other outcome measures such as the WOMAC, um, the a timed walk test and some global parameters as to how they felt it was effective or not. So uh, the results are good or so, uh, promising? Or, uh, so our results are promising. Um, we were able to show an improvement in pain scores in all three groups. However, that only reached statistical significance in the um, low dose Botox group. All the groups showed statistically significant improvements in their WOMAC scores and the pain subscales um, and a couple of the other, the, the, overall sub, the overall score for the WOMAC. So it's promising, but it's not, a, it's not as strong of an effect as I would like before saying for sure this is a treatment we should r really pursue. The other problem is that we compared it to cortisone. One of the reasons for that is because this was done in the United States and cortisone is a standard of care and we felt it was going to be easier to recruit patients if we were offering an active treatment versus a, you know, as the other option in this, in this research trial. Um, so we didn't compare it to a placebo and I think there's still a need for that study before we can say for sure if this is the way to go. So which is the future of botulinum toxin uh, in this setting? Well, um, the, the manufacturers of botulinum toxin, they're, uh, they're all pretty interested in this because obviously if it's effective, it, there's a very big market for it. One of the companies um, that I have been in some contact with regarding study design, trying to advise on study design so that it's done properly, are interested in pursuing a large study, um, placebo control, double blind, very well designed, and I think that will hopefully be, give us a definitive answer one way or the other as to whether this is effective.